So we should start quickly. So now I have a this now I have a third screen dedicated just for JGPT. Because we're using Copilot uh, in uh, Visual Studio Code. So let me know if this stream looks okay or not. Yeah, I'm not sure about Twitch, but YouTube is like several folds better than uh, LinkedIn for videos and streaming. Twitch meant to be good for streaming, but I uh, just started using it. So we have this web application, Flask web application that we've been working on forever for quite some time also load another As you know this, so as you know this whole um, live stream YouTube channel is all around the, this uh, website. So if there is any uh, questions and everything, uh, most of the answers should be there. However, all the live development happening live on youtube so a bunch of videos on youtube as well you can uh, check out all the essentially all the recordings um all the live stream recordings are then being edited into videos if there's anything interesting what is that gap ah that's where the ad was okay so currently we're doing fuzzy logic work Um, and we'll be adding neural networks as well. We just run this Flask application. It will should become clearer. Uh, what's what? Right. So that's the Flask application. Pop it onto this side and open the console as well. Okay, it should be good enough. So just work with these two windows. So hopefully we don't get uh, distracted by anything else. Right. So the the current bot. So we're making a machine learning whatever AI that will play this game. It's essentially doing it over here. Let's 
got the new GPT-4. So yeah, full disclaimer, I'm using GPT-4. I just have it on the now screen. Well, somehow using a uh, GitHub Copilot for developers, that's uh, fine. I don't think anyone kind of consider it, considers it uh, cheating or anything, but then uh, ChatGPT for text generation stuff is a whole different story. So I'm not sure why is that. I think people still kind of getting the hang of uh, you know what of what this all means. So um, so before yeah, we removed all this uh, normalized uh, positive and uh, negative peaks. Well, we don't actually need them have this uh, explanation at the bottom of the HTML as well and let's pop it into a ChatGPT for quick responses so we developing during a live stream so if you can keep your responses short that will be great if you want to try to be funny that's okay as well i'll start sharing a code of a flask application we are making it's already running but we we need to keep uh, improving it yep got it short and snappy with a hint of humor ready for the code when you are cool oops no emojis got it Let's dive into that Flask app. Yeah, I have uh, no emojis in the instructions, in the GPT-4 instructions. So that's the HTML. Nice, a biomedical twist on gaming. Here's some feedback. Og tags, you've got two og, image tags. The local path. Slash bar and okay, 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 okay. Don't, don't worry about the org paths and things like that. I want to focus on the technical side of things, of what's uh, actually being displayed. I'll be sharing some JavaScript and Python code uh, next, and then we can, you can tell me what you think later. Yep. Sounds like a plan. Focusing on the technical aspects makes sense. I'm all set to dive into your JavaScript and Python code. Share away, and I'll be ready with insights, suggestions, or a joke or two, if the mood strikes. Let's get technical. Hammer and wrench. All right, diving into waveforms, JS. Here's a breakdown. Waveform generation, your script is all about creating ECG waveforms, normal and abnormal. You've got the math nailed down with Gaussian functions and sine waves. Clever use of math. Pi to mimic the ECG wave patterns. Abnormal variations. You're creating variations in the QRS complex, P wave, S wave, and T wave to simulate different types of cardiac anomalies. This is a great educational tool for understanding ECGs. Randomized abnormalities. Using math. Random. To decide whether a waveform is normal or abnormal adds a nice touch of unpredictability to the game, simulating real-world scenarios where abnormalities aren't always predictable. Function naming. The names like no P wave, NOS wave, not wave make it super clear what each function is doing. This kind of self-documenting code is a lifesaver for maintenance and collaboration. Okay, okay, didn't I say keep it short? Didn't I say keep it short and snappy? Yep. Got it. Shorter this time. Your waveforms. JS looks good. Nice math for ECG simulation, and smart use of randomness for real life feel. Maybe refactor to reduce repeated code. Check performance, and don't forget a touch of humor. Ready for the next code snippet. Thumbs up medium light skin tone. Get, get rid of the emojis. No emojis. No more emojis. Uh, here's the game logic uh, JavaScript. 
then there will be the Flask uh, application Python uh, backend uh, script and then I'll tell you what the problem is All right, diving into game underscore logic, JS. Canvas setup, you've set up the canvas well, defining height, width, and colors. Good choice of constants for easy tweaks later. Scoring system, the scoring logic with hits, false alarms, correct rejections, and misses is engaging. It encourages accuracy, not just okay, random okay, okay. No emojis. Keep it short. Here is the Python script of the back end flask. It's really your flask back end is well structured. Global variables. You're using global variables to track min, max values for normalization. Okay, okay, okay. Performance testing, okay, fuzzy logic. Fuzzy logic, impressive use of fuzzy logic for analyzing the ECG data. The fuzzy rules and membership functions seem well thought out. Yeah, whatever. Okay, now. Okay, couple of things, and then uh, let me know if you prefer generating the code yourself or uh, generating prompts for GitHub Copilot to do it. So the current problem is that the raw frequency is always zero. Therefore, the normalized frequency is not showing anything at all. Also, okay, let's do this one first. The issue with the raw frequency always being zero could be due to how the frequency analysis is performed in the process underscore data function. Let's troubleshoot. FFD application. Check if the fast Fourier transform, FFD, is correctly applied to your data. The line dominant underscore frequency equals np.abs, frequencies, rgmax, should give you the index of the highest frequency component, not always zero. Data input. Ensure that the data passed to process underscore data is correct and not a flat line or constant value which would result in a dominant frequency of zero. FFD interpretation, remember that the index returned by RGmax corresponds to a frequency bin. You might need to convert this bin number to an actual frequency value. Debugging, add print statements before and after the FFD operation to see what your frequencies array looks like and what dominant underscore frequency you're getting. Alternative analysis, if the issue persists, consider using a different method to determine the dominant frequency, like finding the first peak in the FFT magnitude spectrum that exceeds a certain threshold. If you're comfortable with direct coding, you can modify and test these changes yourself. If you prefer guided suggestions, GitHub Copilot can generate code snippets based on your prompts. Whichever works best for you, I'm here to assist. Okay, so the first one... Where are we calculating F50 currently?
understand what GitHub is complaining about. It should uh, have access to the code. Is finding the dominant frequency. It's taking the absolute value. So if it's always zero, it means the maximum value is always at the first index. Wait. Now oh, we're printing it already. Data input. Ensure that the data passed to process underscore data is correct and not a flat line or constant value, which would result in a dominant frequency of zero. Uh, can we quickly Oops, let's forget the bloody control, uh, control V, control C. In this terminal, it should be control shift. Instead of printing, can you add, oops, yeah, plot. Plot is not fine.
yeah this is the four or five is ECG waveforms that we have right so ah and yes they have a good thing if uh, The array is okay. And yeah, let's bring the frequency and the dominant frequency. Okay, I, I placed the image, uh, shared the image of the the graph of the different uh, ECG waveforms, just overlaid one on top of the other. I think we have four. This should be in the waveform JavaScript file. Keep responses short do not use any emojis yep from the image you provided it looks like we have an overlaid graph of different ecg waveforms if the issue is with the raw frequency always being zero, here's what you can do. Verify the FFT output. Ensure that the output from the FFT operation is correct. The peak should represent the dominant frequency, not zero. Check the input waveform. Make sure that the waveform data being passed into the FFT is correct and hasn't been modified or corrupted before the analysis. Check for DC offset. A DC offset in your signal could influence the FFT output. Try applying a high-pass filter to remove any DC offset before performing the FFT. Inspect the scaling. The frequency value from the FFT needs to be scaled correctly to represent real frequency units, HZ. A yeah, really good point. Plot FFT. It okay, might okay, 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 okay. Yeah, for whatever reason, we have all the values sitting at uh, 300. Uh, which is not cool. I mean, we could just do minus 300. Don't know why it's like that to begin with. But yes, you essentially can subtract the 300 from all the NP data values. Keep responses short. Short. Yep. Indeed, subtracting 300 from NP underscore data to center your waveform data around zero before the FFT analysis is a solid approach. This will remove any DC offset and could resolve the issue with the raw frequency being zero. Here's a snippet to modify your process underscore data function. Remember to apply this adjustment right after converting the data to a NumPy array and before performing any analysis. Give it a shot, and let's see if it resolves the raw frequency issue. Okay. Let's do 
minus zero. Let's bring the plot back. the frequency response seems like I only need the one last side of it what do you think? GPT-4 became super slow. The FFD plot you've shown indicates that you're seeing the typical FFD output for real-valued signals, which is symmetric around the Nyquist frequency. The FFD output for a real-valued time series will be mirrored across the halfway point of the spectrum. This is expected due to the complex conjugate symmetry property of the Fourier transform of real-valued signals. For your analysis, you should only need to consider the first half of the FFT output, as the second half is just a mirror of the first and doesn't contain additional information about the frequency content of your signal. Additionally, the first bin, zero frequency, represents the average or DC component of your time domain signal. If your signal is properly centered around zero, this should be close to zero. To get the dominant frequency, you should ignore the first bin when looking for the peak, as it represents the DC component. Only consider the first half of the FFT output. Here is a refined approach. By using 1, int, len, frequencies, 2, you exclude the DC component and only consider the first half of the spectrum. The plus 1 adjusts for the index offset caused by excluding the first element. This should give you the index of the dominant frequency component within the first half of the FFT output. You're plotting into figure 1. becoming quite uh, heavy I get my CPU uh, struggling a bit Dominant frequency now. I have a dominant frequency of three. Is it being shown? Yeah, that number three makes sense, doesn't it?
get rid of the GUI. Don't need much block leave. Well, raw frequency, raw frequency does make sense, but uh, yeah, we probably don't need any normalization for it. Okay, now the raw frequency, which meant to be called meant to be called the dominant frequency it actually has a value of 5 here to make sure it's actually displaying correctly not running now so why does it keep scrolling stuff yeah we have to get rid of that normalization It's weird that it's always uh, a value of three. Remember quick responses. Great, if you have a dominant frequency value now, that's progress. To ensure it's displayed correctly, check the index to frequency conversion. Validate the conversion from FFT index to actual frequency using the sampling rate. Remove normalization if not needed. If the normalization isn't providing useful information, you can comment it out or remove it. Here's a quick snippet to get the actual frequency from the index. This calculates the frequency in HZ corresponding to the dominant frequency index from the FFT. If you're seeing scrolling behavior in the output and it's not desired, make sure you're not accumulating or continuously appending data in a way that's not intended. Check the logic where you update the waveform and the canvas drawing functions. Uh, this is our uh, output in the Flask uh, terminal. Can you check based on the code provided what the sampling rate is? Uh, remember this is synthetic code.
keep responses short. Also, it is interesting that uh, dominant frequency went from 3 to 5 in this particular case. The abnormality output remained the same. I don't think we need to normalize the frequency considering this is the dominant frequency. Oh no, we might need to normalize it because is there assumption is there an assumption that all the membership functions deal with values between zero and one? Yep. Based on the JavaScript code provided, it appears that the waveforms are generated synthetically without a specified sampling rate. The sampling rate would be necessary to convert the FFT index to a physical frequency in HZ. In synthetic data, if the time scale isn't defined, the frequency units in the FFT will also be arbitrary. Stability of the dominant frequency, the change from 3 to 5 suggests variability in the waveforms generated. If you expect the dominant frequency to be consistent, check the waveform generation process. Normalization. If you're using fuzzy logic with membership functions defined between 0 and 1, then normalization of the frequency to this range is necessary. Consistency in abnormality. The same abnormality score despite different dominant frequencies suggests that the fuzzy logic rules are perhaps not sensitive to the changes in frequency, or the frequency is not heavily weighted in determining abnormality. Remember to cross-verify the integration between your JavaScript that generates the waveforms and the Python code that analyzes them, ensuring consistency in how the data is handled and interpreted. Well, the whole idea for the backend to be agnostic to what the waveforms are. Quick response. Yep. Understood. If the backend is meant to be agnostic to the waveform specifics, then it should not rely on a fixed sampling rate for frequency analysis. It should just analyze the pattern of the waveform data it receives. The normalization and analysis should be based on the patterns and features extracted from the waveforms, regardless of their specific time base or sampling rate. Well, right, so are you suggesting we should be dropping frequency measurement from this analysis. If so, would you recommend replacing it by another feature? Yep. Not necessarily drop the frequency measurement, but if the time base is arbitrary, the raw frequency value, indexed from FFT, itself might not be as informative without a sampling rate context. Instead, consider using features derived from the waveform that don't depend on the actual time base. Relative frequency, use the index of the dominant frequency relative to the length of the waveform. It provides a dimensionless metric that could still be useful for pattern recognition. Peak ratios, the ratio of positive to negative peaks or the presence of certain peak patterns can be a feature. Waveform shape metrics. Metrics like skewness or ketosis can describe waveform shape irrespective of the actual frequency. Time domain features, such as the intervals between peaks or the number of zero crossings. These features can be useful for the fuzzy logic system and keep the analysis time base agnostic. Okay, so how do we change to relative frequency?
To use a relative frequency, you can express the dominant frequency as a proportion of the number of data points. Here's how you can adjust your code. Calculate the relative frequency. Instead of using the raw index from the FFT, divide the index by the total number of data points to get a relative frequency value between 0 and 0 0.5, since the meaningful part of the FFT output is only the first half due to symmetry. Use the relative frequency for analysis. You can then use this relative frequency for your fuzzy logic analysis or any other comparative analysis. Since it's a ratio, it is independent of the actual sampling rate and maintains the time-based agnosticism of your backend. In your fuzzy logic system, the membership functions would need to be adapted to work with these relative frequencies. This approach allows you to still utilize frequency information without needing a concrete time base or sampling rate. Yeah, but then definitely don't need to uh, print stuff like that. Well, mainly because we're already printing it elsewhere. At this uh, Yeah, again, we don't need to normalize it. Okay, this is a great idea. Do we still do? Do we still need to normalize the? relative frequency or just uh, use it in the fuzzy logic as is as is yep Yeah, for fuzzy logic, the input variables are often normalized to fall within the universe of discourse, which is typically 0, 1. Since the relative frequency naturally falls between 0 and 0 0.5, you can use it directly if your membership functions are designed to handle this range. However, if your existing membership functions expect inputs from 0 to 1, you should scale the relative frequency to match. This would ensure compatibility with membership functions defined from 0 to 1. Whether you normalize further or not depends on the design of your fuzzy sets and what they represent in the context of the ECG analysis. If the sets are defined in a way that accommodates the relative frequency as is, no further normalization is needed. Right, so the relative frequency is between 0 to 0.5 and the membership functions are designed to handle 0 to 1 so we can just uh, multiply by 2 and use a scale scale relative frequency
dominant frequency should only be used once Over here we should be using scaled relative frequency okay, relative frequency Okay, so we have dominant frequency used once, relative frequency used once, and scaled relative frequency is the one we actually using. We're using scale relative frequency and normalized. I expect them to be the same. And the terminal. This really works as expected. It's always zero. dominant frequency separately hey okay there's a problem I want to print length.
Yeah. The length of data is 800 data points. It's probably too many, but okay. Yeah, five divided by 800, we get this small number there. This is not good. Any suggestions? It looks like you successfully calculated the relative frequency and scaled it up to match the expected range for your fuzzy logic system. With this scaled relative frequency, you should update your processed underscore data dictionary to include these new values. Now, this scaled underscore relative underscore frequency is ready to be fed into your fuzzy logic system as an input variable, fitting into the membership functions properly designed for the 0 to 1 range. Keep in mind that if the dominant underscore frequency is showing as 5 and the length of data is 800, a relative frequency of 0 0.00625, 5 8 hundredths, is correct, and the scale value of 0 0.0125, 0 0.00625, would be the appropriate input for the fuzzy system. Uh, yes, but I'm pretty sure these values will remain super low. they would not be getting up to one because five seems to be the highest dominant frequency we get and the relative frequency is way too small I would think not to use uh, the division by the length of the data. Maybe we can use something else instead. So the scaled relative frequency actually dynamically changes between 0 and 1. Yep. So what was the problem that with uh, synthetic data? Understood. If 5 is the highest dominant frequency you're getting and you want the scaled relative frequency to span the full range from 0 to 1 dynamically, you can normalize it based on the maximum observed frequency so far. This way, the relative frequency can adapt to the range of frequencies you actually encounter in your data. Here's how you can adjust your code for dynamic scaling. Keep track of the highest dominant frequency seen so far. Let's call it max underscore dominant underscore frequency. Each time you calculate a new dominant frequency, update max underscore dominant underscore frequency if the new value is higher. Normalize the dominant frequency against max underscore dominant underscore frequency to get a value between 0 and 1. Python. Copy code hash update max underscore dominant underscore frequency if the new dominant frequency is higher if dominant underscore frequency greater than max underscore dominant underscore okay, frequency. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know why it's reading the, 
the code as well. Hash normalize the dominant frequency against the maximum observed so far scaled underscore relative underscore frequency equals dominant underscore frequency max underscore dominant underscore. Okay, maybe stop reading altogether. Yeah, it's really hard to talk to this bot properly. Especially when it's uh, giving longer responses with uh, sections and stuff in them. So it's essentially suggesting this code. Right, so instead of that, we're monitoring the maximum dominant frequency. And if it's uh, higher than the current one, then we will be saving it. Dominant frequency scaled. Okay, wait a sec. Okay, confused start getting rid of stuff here we have a dominant frequency then we're saving the maximum dominant square frequency and the scale is scaling Wouldn't the name of this should be scaled dominant frequency instead of scaled relative frequency? You'd think we don't need the relative frequency anymore. Quick response. Yes, in this context, since you're scaling the dominant frequency based on the maximum observed frequency to date, a more accurate term would be scaled dominance frequency. You can drop the relative frequency term if it's no longer providing additional context or value to your analysis. Here's the updated code snippet reflecting this change. Right, so we have now scaled underscore dominance underscore frequency is what you would use for your fuzzy logic analysis which will be between zero and one dynamically adjusted based on the data you receive right so we updating max dominant frequencies if the new dominant frequency is higher in a one liner instead of two lines we don't need the two lines and then we have Then we're normalizing. Yes, and we call it the dominance, the scale dominant. What? Keeps, uh, keeps making mistakes with the name. Should be scale dominant frequency. Now in the process data, it's not called process data, it's called something else.
Okay, this is the scrape. This is the code I have so far with the bits I modified myself. Can you fix it or provide prompts for GitHub Copilot to do it? Yep. To fix the code with your modifications for the scale dominant frequency, you'll need to make a few changes. Initialize max underscore dominant underscore frequency, add a global variable to keep track of the maximum dominant frequency observed. Modify process data, update the processed underscore data dictionary to include the scaled key instead of normalized under the frequency field. Update global ranges function. Since you're no longer using normalized frequency, you need to remove or modify the code that updates global ranges for frequencies. Fuzzy logic input. Ensure that the fuzzy logic analysis function uses the scaled dominant frequency correctly. Here are the code modifications. These changes should align your code with the new approach of using a scaled dominant frequency. Ensure you test the code thoroughly to check if the modifications work as expected. Modify process data. Update the processed underscore data dictionary to include the scaled key instead of normalized under the frequency field. Yeah, why is this not a link? Yeah, no, that's wrong. Bubble marks. So we don't no longer are using normalized frequency. Okay. If we do that. Didn't I just give this to you?
fuzzy logic input. Ensure that the fuzzy logic analysis function uses the scaled dominant frequency correctly. I can't deal with the whole code. It's too much code for it. Yeah, 330 lines. Multi analysis. Frequency. You scaled. We need to, uh, so we don't need to normalize the frequency. Yeah, we're getting in there. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. And uh, this is the kind of stuff GitHub Copilot can deal with. We don't need ChatGPT 4 for it. Don't think we. And it should be better. Oops, it's not actually running. Do we have it? as global variable
Yes, we have a defined Understand what the problem is. Yeah, running it low on time so just pop the whole thing into 54 with this error well, actually to no python how to solve this error keep it short The error is because global underscore max underscore dominant underscore frequency is not being recognized as a global variable inside your function. To solve this, declare it as global inside the process underscore data function where you're trying to update it. Here's the fix. In your process underscore data function, add a global declaration for global underscore max underscore dominant underscore frequency. This line tells Python that global underscore max underscore dominant underscore frequency should be treated as the global variable you've defined outside of the function, not a local one. that way okay let's clear that don't have the analysis result so this thing should be playing the ECG detection game instead of a human um, and the analysis results are missing because we're still using normalized stuff but we actually decided not to normalize the features extracted from the signal This meant to be a machine learning playing this game. It's been kind of working when we try to tune uh, parameters. So we're using a fuzzy logic. Don't know if you're familiar with fuzzy logic, but you will after I will after we finish with this tool. But currently we have this pesky errors coming in. Something with the variables 
being the, the global variables being defined in wrong places. GitHub Copilot is kind of hopeless. At uh, solving errors, GPT-4 is better. Okay, can you provide a prompt for GitHub Copilot? to make sure the global max dominant frequency global variable is assigned correctly. Yep. Sure. Here's a prompt you can use with GitHub Copilot to ensure the global variable global underscore max underscore dominant underscore frequency is correctly assigned and updated. This prompt specifies the context and what you want to achieve, which should help GitHub Copilot generate the appropriate code snippet. Yeah, we have a global variable. Script need to update this variable within the function called process data. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. So it's taking. So it We have process Ooh. So I have process data finding a global variable before the function. Uh, it's to do with the normalization. So for the what are they called in fuzzy logic, the things to work, you need the thresholds correct. So we need to normalize all the parameters between zero and one. That's what we are struggling with. Yeah, this is the same line, isn't it? So there's two lines of code. Yeah, should be the same as that. Uh, clear this run the flask application still running it locally hopefully it will be available for you to play with uh, very soon yeah this normalization is better so the dominant frequency in this uh, waveform is three or five or whatever and then it's it's taking five as the maximum so uh, because 5 is the highest number we had so far, so the normalization will return 1, and if it's 3, it, it will return 0. 0.6. So that makes sense. However,
I have another error. The error message indicates a problem with accessing a normalized key, likely in a dictionary, within the analyze underscore waveform function. This might be because the key does not exist in the dictionary you're trying to access. To resolve this issue, check the processed underscore data dictionary structure in the process underscore data function. Ensure that it contains a normalized key under the frequency key. If you've modified the dictionary structure, like replacing okay, okay, normalized okay, 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 okay. with scaled, make sure these changes are consistently applied throughout your code. Particularly okay, in the okay. analyze under Yeah, the frequency this thing uh, should be no <laughs> that's not the only option is it? Okay, that's weird. So this is the actual uh, fuzzy logic uh, algorithm. This is all the rules uh, for it. Yeah, this should be a good example of the difference between uh, GitHub Copilot and uh, GPT-4. See, so GP, uh, the error sorry. normalized is likely due to the fact that the frequency data structure in the processed underscore data dictionary no longer contains a key called normalized. You have replaced it with scaled. To fix this, you should update the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function to use the scaled key instead of normalized for the frequency data. Here's the corrected portion of your code. Make sure to apply this change wherever normalized is referenced in relation to the frequency data. This should resolve the normalized key error. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Um, Copilot is able to seem to be able to deal with it as well. Sometimes it's putting these links uh, in the chat, which is really helpful because they go to the to where you need to make the change. Yeah, like this one should be. A link. Which it sometimes is. So it's just weird. Try to access normalized. Yeah, we don't want to access. access. Yeah, so amplitude stays normalized because we are normalizing amplitude. Yeah. 
Okay. Let's pop it in there. Default value of what? Okay, replace the default value with the value that makes sense in your context. Okay, this is where we close the... Uh, um, this is where we shut down GitHub Copilot. So I tried having it in a different screen. Um, during this stream. But yes, so it says the error normalized is likely due to the fact that the frequency data structure in the processed underscore data dictionary no longer contains a key called normalized. You have replaced it with scaled. To fix this, you should update the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function to use the scaled key instead of normalized for the frequency data. Here's the corrected portion of your code. Right, let's see if this one is any better. I expect it to be better. So we have the, yes, we have the fuzzy logic analysis. We have the abnormality analysis frequency. Get rid of what the GitHub Copilot told us to do. Scale is the same. Okay. Then we have somewhere normalized frequency membership. Yeah, this bit. Okay, this should be scaled. Oops, I've kept the it's all case sensitive, isn't it? Scale frequency data. Yeah, that's a membership function. So essentially we're saying that the frequency membership is low. If the frequency is low, then we're using the scaled frequency. Okay. Same. And we returning frequency membership, frequency membership, yay. Right, the application is not actually running. By the way, go check out bodykills.com if you haven't done it already. My CPM for today is very high. This is your chance of supporting the project. Yeah, so th this is the ACG game that we're trying to modify. That's the one that humans can play. So if you go on the site, you can play that game. There's a video. Yes, there are ads. Sorry for that. Yes, there would be a video somewhere of me getting to about 1,000 points. You can see if we can beat that. It does become uh, faster every 50 points or so. So go check it out. Now we're doing this fuzzy logic business, but we're essentially combining this two. And later, if this works well, we'll be also adding neural nets to it to make it even better and uh, so you can compare different algorithms it's clear it's gone so run it again Still getting the same error. Okay, this might be a longer debugging. Let's 
shit, if they also stuff something up or... Every time we use frequency, we should not have the normalized bit anymore. Yeah, like over here. Is that? Yeah, that there went away, so yes, we don't need this line. And we have, whoops, keep pressing Ctrl C instead of Ctrl Shift C. It's pretty annoying. The frequency. We have a scaled frequency. It's like the it's being stored somewhere. No, not here. Yeah, this one. Yeah, we have frequency, roll, and scale, so that should be fine. That should be fine. Yeah, probably will hit the the limit of uh, GPT four has this uh, what's it forty messages per three hours currently. Document. Probably hit this limit. Fairly soon. The error scaled suggests that the key scaled is not found in the frequency dictionary within processed underscore data. This can happen if there's a mismatch between the keys set in process underscore data function and the keys expected in fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function. To resolve this, ensure that scaled key is correctly assigned in the process underscore data function and that the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function is correctly using this key. Here's what you need to check and potentially update. In process underscore data function, ensure that scaled underscore dominant underscore frequency is correctly calculated and assigned to the processed underscore data dictionary, Python copy code return. Frequency, raw, dominant underscore frequency, scaled, scaled underscore dominant underscore frequency. Hash are the keys. Closing curly bracket. In fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function, when accessing the frequency data, make sure to use the scaled key and also update the membership value extraction. After making these changes, the keys should align, and the error should be resolved. Make sure these changes are consistent throughout your code.
So I have my had my microphone muted. Not sure for how long. Still getting the same error. It's something this name. Okay, I have the, I checked the code, it is, uh, the script is exactly as you are suggesting. Do I also need to update the game logic JavaScript? Quick responses, please. For updating the game logic JavaScript, ensure it aligns with the changes you've made in your Python Flask backend. Here's what to focus on. Data format, ensure the JavaScript sends waveform data in the format expected by the Flask app. Response handling, update the JavaScript to correctly handle and display the data received from the Flask backend, especially if you've made changes to the structure of the response. Synchronization, if any new features or data points are added to the Flask backend, make sure they're also incorporated into the JavaScript frontend as needed. Check for any specific areas in your JavaScript that interact with the updated parts of your Python code, and revise them to ensure smooth data exchange and functionality. Yeah, it's always tempting to go uh, use uh, GitHub Copilot. Should I use uh, GitHub Copilot for this, or are you gonna generate, change the update the code? Do we need the game logic JavaScript again? Yep. Using GitHub Copilot can be a great idea for generating code updates, especially if you're comfortable with its style of code suggestions. It can help automate some of the more tedious aspects of coding and potentially offer creative solutions. For updating your game logic JavaScript, you can provide GitHub Copilot with specific prompts about the changes you made in your Python Flask app and what you need to reflect in your JavaScript code. Be as detailed as possible in your prompt to get the most relevant suggestions. For example, your prompt to GitHub Copilot could be. This way, you can leverage GitHub Copilot to quickly adapt your front-end code to match your back-end changes. Yay, I'll try that. Do I need to do it in, uh, let's clear the chat, we need to do it with a workspace function so it can find, wait a second, so we need to select the Python script, then we go update the flask backend. Yeah, so I'm not sure which which way is it, but in theory, when you select workspace, it should find uh, the script it needs. Maybe, maybe not. Go in. This won't be JavaScript, right? No. I 
match my flask endpoint. Shouldn't you know what the endpoint is? Match. Clear? Clear. Okay, GitHub Copilot doesn't seem to be able to make the necessary changes. Maybe I'm not using it correctly. Here is my JavaScript. Can you suggest updates to line your javascript with the backend changes focus on how the response from the flask app is handled since you're now using scaled instead of normalized for frequency update the display analysis result function update frequency display since you're using scaled underscore dominant underscore frequency in your flask app Reflect this change in your JavaScript. Replace references to normalized frequency with something like scaled frequency. Check response structure. Ensure that the structure of the response data matches what you're trying to access. If the Flask app sends data under different keys, update the JavaScript accordingly. Here's a suggested update for the display analysis result function. Ensure that the IDs used in getElement by id match the elements in your HTML. This will make your JavaScript correctly display the updated frequency information from your Flask backend. Can you check the HTML as well? Your HTML structure looks well organized for the ECG waveform game. Here are a few suggestions based on your JavaScript updates. Scaled frequency element. Add an HTML element to display the scaled frequency. You've updated your JavaScript to handle scaled frequency, but your HTML still has normalized frequency. Replace it with scaled frequency. Ensure element IDs match. Verify that the IDs used in the JavaScript, get element by id, match those in your HTML. JavaScript file references. Confirm the paths to waveforms. JS and game underscore logic. JS are correct and the files are loaded properly. General check. Ensure all links, images, and other resources are correctly referenced and loading properly. Here's the updated HTML segment for displaying the analysis result. These changes should align your HTML with the updates you've made in your JavaScript and Python Flask backend. No, I'm still getting uh, the error above. Can you double check the code? Yep. The error, scaled, suggests there's an issue with accessing a scaled key in your Flask application, specifically in the analyze underscore waveform function. This could be because the scaled key is not present in the frequency dictionary within processed underscore data. Looking at the process data output, it seems processed underscore data has raw key and a frequency, but not a scale key. To resolve this, you need to ensure that the scale key is correctly added to the frequency dictionary in the process underscore data function and then correctly referenced in the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function. In the process underscore data function, the following line should correctly add the scaled key. In the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function, ensure you're accessing the scaled key correctly. Double check these parts in your Flask application to ensure the scaled key is being correctly assigned and accessed. 
If the scale key is missing, the area seeing will occur. Okay, the chords seem okay, but I'm still getting the same error. Here is the whole Python script again. Yeah, I'll be really hitting that uh, limit. <laughs> Based on your Python script, the issue might be in the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function. There seems to be a mismatch between the data structure of processed underscore data and the way data is being accessed in the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function. Specifically, the area encountering, scaled, suggests that the key, scaled, is being referenced but not found in the frequency dictionary. In your process underscore data function, you correctly create a scaled key under frequency. However, in the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function, you're referencing data, frequency, scaled, directly. If there's any condition where scaled key might not be set in frequency dictionary, it would result in the error you're seeing. Ensure that the scaled key is always set in the frequency dictionary before the process underscore data function returns it. Also, verify that the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function is always receiving this scaled key. One way to avoid this issue is to use a more defensive programming approach, like checking if the key exists before accessing it. This change will prevent your application from crashing if the scaled key is missing for some reason, allowing you to handle the situation more gracefully. The error, all antecedents must have input values. Indicates that one or more of the input variables, antecedents, to your fuzzy logic control system haven't been provided with input values. This typically happens when the data passed to the control system simulation does not include values for all the variables defined in your fuzzy rules. Given the message, scaled frequency not found in input data, it seems that the scaled key under frequency might not be set or passed correctly to the fuzzy logic analysis function. To resolve this issue, ensure the following. Check data passing to fuzzy logic analysis. Make sure that the process underscore data function always computes and includes the scaled frequency in its return value, and that this value is correctly passed to the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function. Data validation. Before you set the inputs for the fuzzy logic analysis, validate that all necessary data is present. 
If any required piece of data, like scale frequency, is missing, handle this case appropriately, either by setting a default value or by skipping the analysis with a suitable error message. Fuzzy logic analysis function. Update the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function to check whether the scale frequency exists in the input data. If it does not, either set a default value or handle the absence appropriately. Here's a revised approach for setting the inputs in your fuzzy logic analysis function. This modification includes a check for the presence of scaled frequency and handles the situation if it's missing, which should resolve the error you're encountering. Okay, we're going in circles here. We are going in circles here. Can you look at the entire code, the updated code that I shared with you, and try a different approach for resolving the this error? Let's tackle this from a different angle. The error, scaled frequency not found in input data, suggests that the scaled key within the frequency dictionary is either not being created or not being passed properly to the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function. Given your updated code, let's walk through the steps where this issue might arise and ensure that the scaled frequency is correctly handled. Creation of scaled frequency in process underscore data function. Ensure that scaled underscore dominant underscore frequency is always computed and added to the frequency dictionary. Python copy code dev process underscore data, data. Global global underscore max underscore dominant underscore frequency. Hash, rest of your code. Scaled underscore dominant underscore frequency equals dominant underscore frequency, global underscore max underscore dominant underscore frequency if global underscore max underscore dominant underscore frequency equals zero else zero. Return. Frequency, raw, dominant underscore frequency, scaled, scaled underscore dominant underscore frequency. Hash, other keys. Closing curly bracket. Passing data to fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function. In the analyze underscore waveform function, where fuzzy okay, underscore... Okay, 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 wait a sec. Let's, uh, uh, what's up with that? Uh, okay, that's fine. Now in return, that's the important bit. In the analyze underscore waveform function, where fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis is called, ensure the processed underscore data contains the scaled key and the frequency. So we're printing it out, process data. No, it does not have it.
a process that seems to only have the raw frequency. Yep. The output you provided indicates that the processed underscore data dictionary only contains the raw key under the frequency field, but not the scaled key, which is expected based on your previous code snippets. This is likely why you're encountering the scaled frequency not found in input data error. To resolve this issue, you need to ensure that scaled underscore dominant underscore frequency is correctly calculated and included in the processed underscore data dictionary within the process underscore data function. Here's how you can modify your process underscore data function to include the scaled frequency. Ensure scaled frequency calculation. In the process underscore data function, confirm that scaled underscore dominant underscore frequency is calculated correctly and added to the frequency dictionary. Check global variable usage. Ensure the global underscore max underscore dominant underscore frequency is being correctly updated and used. Here's an updated snippet for the process underscore data function. This modification ensures that scaled underscore dominant underscore frequency is calculated and included in the processed underscore data dictionary. Make sure that this change is reflected in your code, and it should resolve the issue of the missing scaled key in the processed underscore data. It keeps changing, alternating between those two lines. Obviously, the second one is uh, better, should be faster. Return. Yeah, frequency, row, and scale. Okay. Returning JSON file. Can you regenerate the whole function? Yep. Okay, I'll do this. Continue next time. I'll see you later. Put your questions, uh, Certainly. comments. Let's regenerate the analyze underscore waveform function in your Flask application. This function is responsible for handling the post request to the analyze underscore waveform endpoint, processing the waveform data received, analyzing it using fuzzy logic, and then sending back the analysis results. Here's the regenerated analyze underscore waveform function. In this function, the waveform data is extracted from the post request. The data is processed using the process underscore data function, which should calculate and return metrics like raw frequency, scale frequency, peaks, and amplitude. A check is added to ensure that the scale frequency data is present. The fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function is called to perform the analysis on the process data. The results of the analysis, along with the process data, are structured into a response dictionary. 
This response is sent back to the client in JSON format. Ensure that the process underscore data and fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis functions are correctly implemented and handle the data as expected for this analyze underscore waveform function to work correctly.